Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, your boy Virtus here and today we're back inside of Adobe Photoshop and we're going to be continuing to look at a couple more paint tools inside of Photoshop. So in the last video we went over how we can use the brush tool and a couple of other things to get the look and start drawing in our scene. There's a couple of things that I missed and we haven't gone over yet and those include the eraser tool so that we can actually get rid of some of the work that we've done and also the paint bucket tool and the gradient tool. We're going to be going over all of those in today's video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by creating a new document. For now this is going to be a standard 1920 by 1080. Inside of here we're going to do some basic painting and then from there we're going to show you how we can get rid of some of this stuff using the eraser tool. So let me show you how you can use that. So if you go ahead and click the eraser tool, with this it's going to work like a normal eraser in real life. If you click it's just going to start getting rid of some of your stuff here and the most important thing with this is you don't have to get rid of everything, you can just get rid of part of it. So let's say you're working on some fancy font, you can just get rid of part of the font or you know anything you like really. So anyway, a razor tool, when you're using it you have to select the layer that you've got your painting on. Let me go, you, go ahead and show you that. So if we create a new layer from layer, new layer, and then if we go and paint something on the second layer, if I go ahead and select this second layer and then use the eraser tool, it's only going to get rid of the stuff on the second layer despite me going over the areas where I've painted on the first one. So, you know, that's quite important. You've got to keep your layers in, uh, in mind when you do all of this stuff. And when you do try and erase stuff, you've got to make sure it's all rasterized and flattened. You can't erase smart objects. So if I was to go ahead and put in a piece of text here and just say something like hello and change this to black. If I go ahead and put it in there and then try and erase this, it's not going to let me do it. We've got to rasterize it first. And then from there, we can proceed to go and get rid of that. And once again, that's only going to apply to this layer. So if I click and start erasing the text and then move over to the stuff in the background, it's not going to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to press Ctrl Alt Z to get some of my squiggles back. And from here, there's a couple of other things we can do with the eraser tool. Most importantly, we can change the size of this to make it get rid of more a little bit quicker. Or if you want to be a bit more precise and have a little bit more detail, you can turn it down. So in the same way we did with the brush in the last video, just go over to the brush size over here in the top left, go to size and then you can change it up. So if I change it to something like 400, it's going to be a big brush and I can get rid of all of this in a couple of seconds. Whereas if I was to change this down to something like 30, it's only a tiny little brush and it allows me to go into a little bit more detail, but it will take me a little bit longer for me to get rid of everything on here. So that's quite important. So, next up, I think that's pretty much everything we need to go over for the eraser. Next up, we're going to go into the paint bucket tool and the gradient tool. So starting with the paint bucket, most of you should be familiar with what it does, and I'm going to give you a quick example. So if I go ahead and create a new layer, layer, and then just press OK. From here, if I now go ahead and use the paint bucket tool, and then just click in my scene, it's going to make it all in blue, all in the foreground color that we've got here. So if we change this to something like a red, we can then go ahead and make the whole background red. This is only going to apply to that one specific layer, and if we was to move another layer on top of it, it's not going to affect it. So let me show you. So if I create another layer now, and if I go and draw on this, making sure I use a different color this time. So let's say I go for a little green, I can paint on here and it's going to be on top of the background layer. If I remove the background layer, you can see it's all fine and dandy there. So, one other thing that I do want to mention is if you do use the paint bucket tool, it's not always going to be the whole scene. It's just going to be sort of everything within that sort of color range. So let me try and show you that. So if I go ahead and select this new layer, you can see I've got this stuff here. If I click it, you can see, let's just change this to another color for example. So if I try and change this to a blue, I click it, it's going to make that whole layer blue, everything within that color, color range because it thinks it's one object. You know, it creates some virtual boundaries that you can't see and it will just try and, uh, uh, you know, fill it really. Um, it's probably the easiest way to fill things. So let me go ahead and show you another example of that with the paint bucket tool. So if I create some text and just say, hello world, and make sure I spell it properly and then I'll just chuck this in here. If I was to go ahead and rasterize it in the same way that we have to for the eraser 
and the paint tool before we can do anything with that layer we have to rasterize it from here if I go ahead and use the paint bucket tool I can then change each one of these little objects into a different color so it's gonna think that each one of these letters is a different object because they're separated so you can see there's a little gap in between each letter they're not connected if they were all connected then it would think it was all one object and it would just fill the whole thing so let me go ahead and show you so let's change this to a different color now so this time we're going to change it to a yellow and I'm just going to click here for hello and then for the H and you can see it's only done that one shape if I go and change this one here now to a green I can do that and then so on and so forth and I can continue to do that for the rest of it so getting rid of all of that I think that's everything that we need for that tool so the next one that we're going to go over is the gradient tool once again I'm going to create a new layer and I'm also going to get rid of the background layer so that we can see this nice and clearly so gradients are something else they're quite different so by default if we go over to the gradient selection in the top you can see we've got a couple of presets now yours might not be the same as my ones but you've got a couple of it, couple of them in here so a gradient is essentially a fade between two colors so if I click this one preset here black and white what it's going to do is it's going to fade between white and black over sort of a duration or over your scene. So let me press OK with that selected and then if I click and drag it's going to fade between it and it's going to fade it along this line that I'm clicking and dragging out here. So starting off with the black in this side it's going to be there or if I start off from this side it's going to be black in the top left and then white in the bottom right and that, that's pretty much as simple as gradients are really. If you click that you can then go in here and you can change the color. Like I said you've got a couple of presets over here and then from here if you just want to manually change it so let's say you didn't want the black to be so black you could then go and change this to something like a gray and it's going to make the gradient a little bit smoother so if i go ahead and press ok and now draw on a gradient just by clicking and dragging you can see it's now not so dark at the top you can do that with all kinds of different colors um, so let's change this one to a snazzy pink and then if we drag that in you can see we've got this nice gradient effect now with this gradient you don't have to apply it to the whole layer you can also apply that gradient to a selection so let me go ahead and show you so if I grab my rectangular selection tool drag it into my scene here and then if I go and grab this uh, gradient tool again let's change this to another color so we can e see it nice and easily this time we'll use orange yellow orange press OK and then if I drag and draw that gradient it's only going to do it inside of that one selection and it's going to keep it within those boundaries which is quite nice. Now there's a lot of things that you can do with the gradient and I'm not going to go over all of them I'm just going to go over the most important things. So you can add as many colors as you want on here if you want to add another one you just click anywhere on this little chart and you can add it on and then from the color selection you just change that there and your location is pretty much how far it is along the little fade track that we've got here. So enough of all this stuff on the inside, there's a couple of other different gradient modes that you want to keep in mind. You have got your different uh, gradient modes, so you've got sort of left to right or sort of fading down. You've also got your radial gradient. Radial gradient, what that's going to do is draw it out from the center and from there it's just going to go out. So if I go ahead and click this, this color is going to be in the center and then this color is going to be on the outside. So let's go ahead and draw that again and you can see that there's loads of different modes that you can play around with. Like I said, I'm not going to go over all of them. What I want you guys to do is just experiment with some of these different gradients and see what you can do with that. Anyway guys, that is pretty much everything for the paint tools that I wanted to go over in this video. Once again, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating, your boy Virtus, signing out.